Hi folks, we did it. We built it. Black oxide coated functioning repeat o meter. But hold on, let's walk through the last steps we took to get her here. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Making the link bars. So these are the one eighth inch thick pieces of steel that are used to avoid, uh, I call it hyperflexing or overextending uh, the flexure, both up and down. And it's interesting, what I learned is that that flexure is almost preloaded. It has to have ever so slight amount of downward pressure onto the plate, but not so much that you lose that consistent flat face of the whole tool. And that's also one reason why I realized you need some weight of this tool is you need the weight to overcome that very slight amount of downward preload pressure. Noah actually ran with these. I was out at the Bar Z Summer Bash. And again, I think this is so cool. He's using Fusion, using the Tormox, making these parts, dialing them in, makes me very happy. It's really cool. And hey, from a business standpoint, this is, you know, this is for fun, but it's proving that we can do it. We're getting people interested and able to run manufacturing, make parts, checking the part here with gauge pins for correct tolerances. We wanted a ever so slightly of a slip fit over the top, which goes over a dowel pin. The bottom, we purchased this brass uh, precision shoulder screw from McMaster Carr. So we've got a quarter inch shoulder here and we want the link bar to be about 15 thou bigger. That's what gives it the flex, so it's not held on rigidly. So we did the two ID holes, switching over now to a fixture to do the outside profile. Next, we gotta make a handle for this thing, which is two purposes. One, obviously it's a handle to carry it and carry it safely. The other thing that's common with metrology tools is having thermal isolation points. And this is a metal handle, so I'm not sure how much it's doing compared to the same sort of points on a precision level. But nevertheless, heat will cause things to move. And this is a, a tool that has the potential to be incredibly precise. Here's the other cool thing that happened throughout this project. And it really was, was inadvertent or unplanned, which is that everybody in the shop w started working on this project. And I thought that was really cool. So using the Tormach lathe just to round off some pieces uh, ended up being stainless. I didn't realize that. Uh, we quickly figured that out toward the end here when we tried to black oxide it. And then taking up the intersection, which has got a tap quarter 20 to thread into the top of it. Press in the balls. So these are gonna become the feet, just uh, off the shelf McMaster carbide uh, balls per Tom Lipton's recommendation. Here is the actual product page and the material is the E52100 Rockwell C60, pretty darn hard. And pressing in the dowel pins on the top bar, the sides. So this is what the link bar will made into. And I wanted to check the feet. I realized it would be very important. The pockets were machined at the same time. So I was pretty sure that the floor was coplanar, but I wanted to make sure when I pressed them in that they were all pretty darn close to the same height. Uh, we are grinding them anyway. So I don't think, uh, I don't say it wouldn't matter. Obviously you don't want the thing to move on you, uh, but I just want to just try to be thorough and be smart about it. And then next up, grinding them flat.
Unlike Tom Lipton, I do not have one of those beautiful Marvel in-feed vertical bandsaws. So I saw this, uh, actually Ellis makes it. And I thought, well, this is easy to make ourselves. So we made this vertical table that just sets in the vise. Worked great. Took my time here, scribed the lines, tried to feed in to get as, as good and smooth and accurate as a saw cut as I can. We filed it a little bit afterward. Caswell black oxide kit, the cold version. The website looks spectacular with how this stuff works. I've heard good things about Caswell. Let's give it a try for the Rapidometer. Should be a perfect way, knock on steel, to have both a good look, like a nice black look to it, as well as some rust protection. From Caswell, we got the black oxide solution. We bought, we paid like 30 bucks extra to get the dry finish. I didn't want the normal version for like $70 that left an oily finish. I wanted it dry, so this is about $100 shipped. So those are the two dry hardeners. And then they included two of these buckets. I picked up some bins that I think are gonna be a little easier for our parts, just from Walmart. And I picked up some distilled water from the grocery store. So nine pints of distilled water, that's like 1.13 gallons, so. Or in this stuff, it doesn't list if there's a shelf life once we mix it. I can't imagine it, it lasts, so we'll see. The instructions are to take our part. It's been clean. That's obviously really important. It's like painting. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the worst thing in the world, which is that the more you do prepping, the better off it's gonna look. Uh, we sandblasted one of them. The others, we just used a heavy Scotch-Brite pad, then some Simple Green, then some acetone to clean them off. Uh, but we're gonna swirl it around here between 30 seconds and five minutes. That's what the directions say. It's a pretty big window. I suspect we'll notice and see. Then out of that, a quick rinse in water, very quick. Uh, this is regular tap water. The instructions say fresh water. The prior sentence said distilled water, so I'm assuming that that means it's okay. Lastly, we're gonna put it into the hardener where we'll let it soak for between one and two minutes, shake off the excess, and then let it hang. So we got all our stuff ready to go. Let's rock and roll. Hammering in the screw nails. What is a screw nail? These little guys, it's what you see all the time, especially in the older machinery that uses to hold those plaques on. And speaking of plaques, Ed, uh, who's here this summer doing Arduino work and automation work, has made these plaques. And we did a whole separate video because they are so awesome. And I wanna thank Ed. What an awesome process, really cool. Click here for a card to that video. We used a set of transfer punches to mark the hole locations, drilling them just undersized for the nail screws. I can never remember what they're called. And then we just used the Arbor Press to push them in. Final assembly. There's a hidden hammer. I thought that'd be kind of a fun way to uh, 
to go to Tom a little is throw a hammer inside a cavity, which also doubles as a storage device. We, we threw in some extra brass bushing so that Tom can use this with different adapters. I thought that was a nice little touch. And then last but certainly not least, Zach, who made a couple of the other parts of some off camera, also helped us put together the Kaizen foam. Let's box it up. Little note to Tom. It was Tom's idea to use the ammo can, which I think is great. They're cheap, they're watertight, they're secure. Print out the label. We love using uh, ShipStation for all the shipping on our product side. Make sure we give it good foam packaging, some of the new Saunders tape, and off she goes. So obviously before we package it, package it up, does it work? It does, at least I think it does. I'll be curious to see what Tom says. When I say I'm not sure, it's because I wanna test and see how repeatable it is and how accurate it is. We had no problem adjusting the preload to zero. I will admit having one of Tom's really cool double threaded differential screws would be awesome. But when I drop the nose of it off the plate and pull it back on, I repeat to zero, which is darn good given the resolution of this Mar gauge. And I put a piece of feeler gauge under it and the value reflected pretty close to the thickness of that feeler gauge. So as far as I can tell, it's a win. Really happy with how it turned out. And here's what I think is cool. It turned into this team project. Noah, Jared, Julie, Ed, Zach, we all did something on it, which I thought was really cool. Folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.